I tend to use evidence in, in decision making for the purposes of sort of diagnosing what exactly is the problem that's at play here so that we can clearly look at what options we might have to resolve it. And for me, some of the best examples of that are when we look at a problem that we think is emerging in community, we go to the research to see who else has experienced this problem, how have they tackled it, but then we use our surveillance evidence to look at, okay, how clearly do we understand this problem for this particular community right now? And that combination of things I find very, very helpful because it tends to lead us to a path that not only helps us discover what the solution can be, but also helps us explain why we think this is the solution to the community that's affected. So our syphilis outbreak in Halifax started uh, around 2009, and what was interesting about the outbreak at its onset was we had some experience from other jurisdictions, so some research evidence in particular pointing to certain interventions being more effective than others. And so moving us away from condom use and safe sex messaging as the primary intervention and looking more at treatment and increasing access to treatment and, and testing as the appropriate intervention for syphilis outbreaks. And so we had that background. We were able to take that evidence to the gay community in Halifax in particular and ask them about, you know, what do you think of this evidence? Does that make sense for here? Is the context that's described in these other papers similar to the context here? And their overwhelming response was it absolutely works for here. And by the way, public health, if you try to do those things that you normally do, like condom use and like uh, safe sex campaigns, you run the risk of becoming irrelevant to us as a community. We actually need you now. We want you to look critically at the evidence and actually do the things that both the evidence and our gut feel of our community are telling us make, uh, make sense. And so having the evidence to start that conversation with that community was really important to us and, and definitely steered us away from making a wrong decision in the absence of that context from community. So I think when we are, you know, sort of launching solutions, even when we have the best evidence to suggest that the solution might work, another important piece of evidence to generate is the outcomes from our implementation of that solution. And so one of the easiest ways that we found to do that is simply to document what happens as we implement a solution. So we have the evidence that this solution might work, we try it, by trying it, uh, doing some things, learning from those things, failing along the way, we get a real sense of how did this actually work for us? And that's helpful because we can share those lessons with others who may be looking at the same solution and wanting to try the same thing for their communities. They get a sense from us as to how it worked, what did we do, what might we do differently. And so that documentation along the way is another form of evidence that we can share back to the public health community and to communities at large that informs how they might take, take on something similar in the future.